K-I-L-R Taylor Games Simmers and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer and welcome back to the World Tour featuring I almost said Microsoft <laughs> Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 for the Commodore 64. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about where we're going on this flight. Okay, so we're over here on the edge of the edge of paradise. On the Chicago chart, uh, we're all the way to the right, uh, and we are here at Battle Creek, W.K. Kellogg Regional, which is called something else now. Uh, not sure what. <laughs> that, that's not important. But what is important is where we're going. And we're going to be flying over here to Muskegon, Muskegon County. Now this is going to be, mm, I don't know. No, I don't think we need to tune in White Cloud. I guess we could. I mean, what else are we going to do, right? So we'll tune in Muskegon at 115.2. <clears throat> and we'll head directly there. And for White Cloud... Mm, I suppose we can tune in to the 200 radial and we should end up somewhere around there which, which will give us oh no 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 hold on if we do 220 then that would put us right about there and then we could turn and we can land on the on the runway. I, I, I think I like that a lot better. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get all this uh, set here. So we said Muskegon is going to be 115.2. And we got an ATIS here, so let's just take a look and see what it says. Okay, well, I thought that was it. <laughs> there it goes. See, just to show you that we're at Kellogg. Okay, landing the parting runway five. Advise control on initial contact, you have Tango. I used to, when I was playing this when I was a kid, I was like, how do I inform them that I have Tango and what does that mean? And why does that always change, you know? It's like, why is it Tango? Why is it Alpha? Why is it Bravo? Why is it Zulu? You know, I didn't understand all that stuff. And of course, there's the transponder. And I didn't know what that was. And I know you could set it, but I didn't know what it was for, and it didn't work. Of course, now I know what it's all for, so. <laughs> all right. So we were setting up the navs. Well, that is not going to work. Okay, geez there tab n2 gets us to nav 2 very particular 117.6 okay and then we were going to set obs number 2 to 
2-0. Okay. We're set there. And as far as... Man, that's off. Tab V1 for... Uh, Bore one or whatever you want to call it. Let's find out what So there's a little bit of a delayed reaction when you're moving these uh vectors here. All right, so a, my goodness, keeps going back and forth, back and forth. All right, so I guess 324 will be good enough. Yeah, that's close. All right, so take a look at the mags. It's right, right underneath the um, the time. So if we do tab M2, you see we got right, tab M3, we got left, tab M4, now it's on both, and if we go tab M5, it went to an S for start, and now we got power, power, I got the power! Whoa! Just about crashed into that, which would have been annoying. All right, let's figure out, let's see. Runway 5. Okay. Oh, runway 5. That's the opposite. Okay. Oh. If we just follow this line right here, <laughs> which is supposed to be a taxi line, I guess, uh, that will take us... No, that will not take us to runway 5. Well, it might. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, it will. Kind of. Doesn't take us all the way to five, but... So, follow the brown line. That is the most that we have for taxiways, apparently, in this... I was thinking they could have done better than that. Just seems kind of lazy, you know? I mean, if you're going to make uh, taxiways, at least make them. Don't just draw lines. Oh, but it is what it is. You know what I'd love to see is I'd love to see... Because uh, there are people who who homebrew um, Commodore 64 games, which I think is cool. I want to see some homebrewers um, finish up the Sublogic Scenery discs. 12 was not made for the Commodore 64. Now you might be able to get all the all the information you uh, need from the PC version because the PC had Microsoft Flight Simulator had scenery disc number twelve, but 
The one thing they all have in common is that Sunari Disc 8 and 10 were never made. <clears throat> so that's what we need some homebrewers to do. Do Scenery Disc number 8 and number 10. You could get... Um, well, you might be able to get the data, like pull uh, some of the data from the Sublogic uh, USA East and probably West <clears throat> and at least get an idea of um, what airports may have been covered in those areas. And then you can get the north and east coordinates from, like, we'll say uh, Flight Simulator 98, because I think it still had north and east as well as uh, the coordinates, as well as the, um, you know, the coordinates that we know of today. I think it had both. Okay, so I think that's our runway up there. Maybe. I don't know. Let me see. Yep. That is the runway. <coughs> we'll just use the runway and taxi to the end of it and turn around. Sounds like a master plan here. I've added weather here and there um, in Sublogic FS2. But my question is, do you think I should add not just clouds, but do you think I should add some wind layers too? I tell you what, this thing is a pain to try to fly when there is um, wind. Uh, so much so that it's not very fun. So I've kind of stayed away from wind layers. I guess wind layers that are not on, <laughs> not on the ground. But <clears throat> I want to take care of you folks. You let me know. Um, if you if you love this Commodore 64 series uh, and you want to see wind, well, you can't really see it, but you know what I mean, then I will definitely do that. And maybe I should just do it just because. I'll grab some real weather, real world weather, and we'll manually put it into a uh, flight sim. Because that's about all we're going to be able to do. All right, we are lined up and ready to go here. So let's go ahead. Let's get our, let's see, our flaps are up. That's good. Well, let's get one flap down. We're supposed to have flaps for takeoff anyway. All right. Uh, trim is looking good. And full throttle. And stay on the runway. <laughs> <coughs> And we're airborne! Woo! Look up the rear. Man, that didn't take long for us to get up the, in the air, did it? Raise those flaps. I kept thinking that was a, 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 a river or something back there, but no, that's the sky. It 
so that is uh, was a WK Kellogg Regional. We are now departing Battle Creek. What a cool name, <laughs> Battle Creek. That's an awesome name. I want to go visit Battle Creek just because it just because it sounds cool. <clears throat> All right, we're going to turn here. Turn to a heading of, well, 324, or close to it. We got 62 miles to go for our flight. Let's get out of our turn here. We'll throttle down here and level off. Take a look at the scenery. Okay, where is that going? Um, hmm. It's not Grand Rapids. I'm not quite sure what that is. Oh, there's W. It could be Kalamazoo. That could be Kalamazoo over there. Sim Caesar, how you doing, bud? Good to see ya. We're having some retro memories here with Flight Simulator 2, Commodore 64, the very, very, very first flight simulator uh, that I have flown in my life. This is where it all started for me. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think I'm the only nutty, uh, uh, nutty crazy guy that's playing it on Twitch. But, you know, with the Flight Simulator 2020 coming out, I gotta think that some people are gonna want to see where, you know, where did, where did it all begin? What, what did it look like? How did it play in the early years? And I've been wanting to, you know, go back and, and actually play all of these um, like I did uh, long ago. And I didn't want to keep that experience to myself. I wanted to share it with um, other people. Um, and I already have a boatload of uh, flight simulator videos over on uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, this world tour actually started at Meg's because, hey, you, you know, you have to start at Meg's, right? Um, and basically uh, flew, flew around and this is where we're at right now. Um, and it's not just Commodore 64. I've also been doing it on the Commodore Amiga. I did it on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2 uh, to a point. <laughs> I have some problems with the scenery disc on, on number 2, but also 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, well, 5, <laughs> 95, 98, 2000, 2002, 2004, FSX, and X-Plane. P3D I am planning to do. I'm just doing something a little different, a little special with that, but it's going to be following the same flight plan also. And I think what that does is that allows people to see these flights and then compare them uh, with, with other simulators. And they don't have to, you know, there, I mean, yeah, there are channels that compare the graphics, but they don't compare the actual flights. 
So if I was to fly, and I did, fly along the Mississippi River, um, you would be able to see how it looks from simulator to simulator. And I think that's just a cool thing. And it's cool for me because I start with the early simulators and kind of work my way up. And so as I'm doing that, I'm seeing how the areas develop over time and it's kind of cool. And although there are people, maybe not on Twitch, but although there have been people that have done flights on YouTube, no one, from what I could see, has done any flights using the scenery discs, using the sublogic scenery discs. So I am going to rectify that situation. That is Battle Creek back there. Just in case you wanted to get some VFR. <laughs> and lots of green grass in front of us and blue sky. Yes, I am using an emulator. Uh, this is CCS64 version 3.9. I have used this emulator for a long while. Um, it's been very uh, reliable. I have tried other emulators and I just, they just don't compare to this one, in my personal opinion. I've got, I got C64 Forever, which is done by Cloanto, which is the same company that has the Amiga Forever um, emulator, which if you love the Commodore Amiga, absolutely have to get that. That is a fantastic emulator. Uh, and there's another uh, C64 emulator, but uh, this is this is the one for me. This is the one that I've always liked. It's pretty much always always done well for me. Now, even though I have an emulator, I do actually have. Uh, I think it's up here. I do actually have the original. The original Flight Simulator 2. And I did uh, I did a game review of that on, on my YouTube channel as well. But yeah, <laughs> floppy, floppy disk. A real floppy disk. But I, I had to get this uh, just for... Uh, memories, you know. I I don't have an actual Commodore 64 to uh, to fool around with, I, but you know, I'm not really gonna do that on a. I mean, those discs. Uh, who knows if they still work or not? Ah, see, there you go. And when you say FS1 on the Apple, yeah, I know you're talking about Sublogic 1. That's that really rough, uh, scary version of Flight Simulator. <laughs> you didn't have much you could really fly in. I think I played it once with an emulator. There's like an old Flight Simulator museum or something like that on the internet. Um, and I have messed around with it, but oh my goodness, that one's just kind of hard to get into. Uh, but I have played the Microsoft Flight Simulator 1. I do have that one on my channel. I think I've got three, two or three videos on it. Um, the interesting thing about that is it has, the Chicago area has five airports and that's it. It's got, it's got VORs, but all it's got is five airports. And the graphics are whacked out. And it just looks like spaghetti lines all over the place. Um, I thought maybe Flight Simulator 1 was just so glitched uh, that it would be 
not very very hard to fly but someone told me that the PCXT I think that's what it is an actual real machine would be able to display those graphics properly and I tried playing it on PC emulator which well I thought it would you know emulate the real hardware but the graphics still just ugh. you got lines just moving all over the place it just looks funky it's really bad yeah flight simulator 2 was definitely definitely a, a leap ahead of that added more airports um, the graphics are relatively the same but at least the graphics work <laughs> And it had the sublogic scenery discs where Flight Simulator 1 did not. But even you even though you had the scenery disc, you still did not have full USA coverage. Because there are 12 discs that were made for the United States, and scenery discs 8 and 10 were never made. And that always irritated me. Um, especially with the Commodore 64, I used to have that Sublogic blue binder that had the scenery discs uh, inside it. I had I had bought it because I had bought the it was like the Western United States collection, so I had it scenery disc one through six. Um, they released that first, and then I think they released seven, which was the East Coast with Florida, uh, and then I think they did eleven. Because I, I always remember 7-Eleven, you know, like the convenience store. And they did 9. They never released Scenery Disc 12, which was New York up to Maine for the Commodore 64. But they did release it for the PC and the Commodore Amiga. So... <clears throat> Even though I can't see the graphics on the Commodore 64, I'll be able to see pretty much the same graphics on Flight Simulator 2 uh, PC, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2 and a little better graphics on Flight Simulator 3 and uh, the Amiga uh, Flight Simulator uh, 2 uh, but even though you can use it on Flight Simulator 4, why? I mean you've got the Sublogic USA East and USA West collections which is hard to find and I, I have those, and it cover it. That one does literally cover the entire United States. It's not a compilation of the discs. It really is all the whole United States, and so that is very cool. No, no, FS1 you can do in color. Um, don't believe me? Head to my YouTube channel. <laughs> you can do it in color. You have to set it for a composite. A composite color monitor and uh, not mutter it's more like a com it's I guess like you hook it up to a TV or something but yeah you can play it in color the Commodore is exactly what you're seeing here um, it was always color um, although the dashboard is this white and gray thing going on here um, the color looks better on the Microsoft Flight Simulator. But you may find this interesting because I didn't find this out until uh, a year ago when I was actually going through the manual. The Microsoft Flight Simulator has always had a Cessna, right? It's always been a Cessna. And so I thought this was the same way, you know, the Sublogic Flight Simulator. Nope. This is a Piper. This is a Piper PA-35, I believe. I believe that's what the manual says. And I always wondered, because the Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's got that curve here on the dashboard. And that curve has always stayed there um, with each, um, each version of my uh, Flight Simulator. But it was never here in the Commodore 64. It's always been this uh, straight thing. And I like, I always thought that little curve on the dash was kind of cool. <laughs> and I didn't understand why this didn't have it. And well, I know now know why. They're two different planes. 
But ironically, the Amiga Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. Ooh, scenery load. Uh, that one was a Cessna. So. <laughs> And we are going off course, but you know, we'll use our rudder here. I think I have tried to play this with a joystick, at least with a with a real machine back back in the '80s, and I couldn't fly this thing worth a darn. <clears throat> So I've always used the keyboard uh, for this uh, old simulator. But on the later simulators, yeah, joystick uh, uh, all the way. <clears throat> it's funny, I tried to fly them with, with the keyboard. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, they... they the keyboard works great for the old ones. They don't work so great for the new ones. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, the uh, keyboard was more precise. Um, and it's really hard to try to line up with, with the runway. I mean, you would know. You mean, you, you played uh, the early version. And so trying to line up with a runway when all you see is a jagged line and it's not until you, until you get closer to that airport um, that you realize that you're not lined up that it's sitting at an angle like like this <laughs> and then you're trying to go this way and that way the only way I can do my fine precision is with the rudder so I always flew this with the auto coordination off I am still I am still climbing here. And thank you for following. I appreciate that. You are now officially part of the killer community. We have fun here. And just to kind of give you an idea of, of uh, what we do on this on this channel as far as Twitch and over on YouTube I kind of mirror them as far as the the schedule and the theme so Mondays is Minecraft Monday so I do um, just Minecraft on Monday and uh, keep in mind this is in the evenings because I got real life stuff during the day uh, Tuesday Tuesday I I don't uh, it's that one is a day off for me to work on cinematic videos I have some flight simulator uh, sim cinematic videos on my channel uh, no face cam no talking no narration or anything like that they're uh, full flights and it's got original music that I uh, composed and put together uh, in certain parts of the, uh, of the flight and plus they also act they're kind of like a sightseeing thing too so as as we're flying over certain parts uh, of scenery I'll point out you know with like a title uh, this city or, or, or this river or or, or whatnot um, Wednesday is whatever Wednesday so whatever I want to put on Wednesday is what that is Thursday is throwback Thursday which Right here, Flight Simulator. This is pretty much uh, old. <laughs> and as, I'm not going to say it's about as throwback as you can get, but uh, we're, we're getting there. Uh, Friday is Flight Simulator Friday. So just Flight Simulator on Friday. Um, it could be this one. Um, it could be one of the other old ones. Um, or it could be one of the new ones. It could even be X-Plane. But it's, it's going to be flight simulator related. Um, I also have videos on Sierra Pro Pilot and uh, Terminal Reality Fly and Fly 2. So those are also um, what I would consider eligible for Friday. And then Saturday is Sim Saturday. So anything simulation related. Again, flight simulator. 
Um, but I also have other videos that I do. Uh, the Truck Simulator, Euro Truck Simulator 2, American Truck Simulator, Cooking Simulator, um, or what's that other one? Car Mechanic Simulator. I do have Farming Simulator. I haven't done anything with that for a while. So, and then also The Sims. So it could be The First Sims, which I have a series on, um, or Sims Online. Which, yes, Sims Online is, is back. It's been back for three years, but it's under the title Free SO. Uh, but it still works like Sims Online. It's amazing. It, it, fans brought it back. It's absolutely amazing what they did. Um, also, Sims 4 is, is another thing that I may do on a Saturday. Um, and then Sunday is Sci-Fi Fantasy Sunday. So anything sci-fi related or fantasy related... Uh, would be on a Sunday so I could do No Man's Sky um, or there's a game called Empyreon uh, which is still in uh, Alpha I think it's still an Alpha game on Steam but it's a very good one um, there's also Star Trek Online which is another one that I, I, I like um, so yeah so that's uh, something. And also, as far as Sims, I also consider the games like Sid Meier's Civilization. I also consider that a Sim type of game. Hey, hey it's a simulation of building uh, a city or a civilization, for, for that matter. So um, also City Skylines, I think that's the name of it. Uh, that's a great, great game. <clears throat> is it me or are we really off course here we've still got 36 miles to go I'm like looking at my ooh we got scenery <laughs> we got scenery over here this could be Grand Rapids If we're 35 miles away from Muskegon, then I'm thinking this is Grand Rapids. We'll take a look at the, uh, the map here. So here is the scenery disc map, which is the Chicago area chart. And we left here. And I'm thinking that uh, like I think this is Grand Rapids, so I think we're passing Grand Rapids and we're heading there. So, downward sim. Hey, how you doing, bud? Good to see ya. Yeah, isn't this an amazing uh, simulator? This is um, <laughs> loading scenery. Uh, this is my very first uh, flight simulator that I flew when I was a kid, teenager. And I had almost all of the scenery disc. I had all the ones that Sublogic put out anyway. And I used to fly from one side to the other side. And of course, there wasn't much to see, but um, I'd have it going on the computer and, and I would like go watch TV or something, <laughs> do homework. Um, but after three hours, and especially when you change scenery discs and you realize that, oh good, I'm still on course or I, I just got, I just got tuned into a VOR. I don't, it was exciting back then because you're, you're using your imagination and especially when you're getting uh, up to the airport that, that you wanted to go to. I don't have a C64, but I definitely have my copy. <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the exact same copy uh, that uh, we had back then. 
Um, I had gotten this for collection purposes, um, but I also made use of it for a uh, game review on my channel of uh, Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. So I did an unboxing and kind of went through what was on there and then did a review on the actual uh, game itself. So, so you might want to check that out. Uh, you might want to check that out on YouTube. Uh, I believe I'm the only person who has done a game review on uh, Flight Simulator 2. And I got, a f I got some other game reviews on there on other Flight Simulator related stuff. So I've got one on Pro Flight 98, which is the ATC uh, program for Flight Simulator 98. I also did Europe 1 from BAO Apollo. I did that one. And Airport 2000 Volume 1, I did. Was there another one? <laughs> Try, trying to think if there's another review that. Oh, yes, the Mega Scenery. I did Mega Scenery North, uh, Pacific Northwest for the flights for Flight Simulator 98. I gotta tell you, the photorealistic scenery that that is uh, that was done by Mega Scenery. This is like way back when they first started. For Flight Simulator 98, holy crap, it looks so good. I mean, had they done the entire United States and did that for Flight Simulator 98, that would have been absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm, I was just awestruck by, by what I saw. I'm like, my goodness, this is Flight Simulator 98. This, that is so cool. How am I streaming this? Good question. Uh, I am using an emulator. Uh, the emulator is CCS64 version 3.9. If I had a real Commodore 64 machine, uh, it probably would not look this good. <laughs> So yes, um, this is just what I thought. We are looking at Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's Grand Rapids right there. I'm not sure what river that is, but pull up the map here. This is where we're at, right in this area. We're not going to be flying over Kent. But like probably somewhere around here but here's the river right there so Muskegon just is gonna be on the other side there and that's what we got tuned in here on the uh, VOR or NAV1 we've got Muskegon tuned in at uh, got 27.8 miles to go and I've got white cloud tuned in here so when this centers up that should give us uh, a good a good indication of when to turn to line up with the runway yeah doesn't it look like Grand Rapids I mean I think this is better than Flight Simulator 2020. Because <laughs> you know what? You can play this on any machine. <laughs> I could play this on my tablet. <laughs> yes, every two degrees. The uh, OBS is every two degrees. And I'm sure playing the Commodore 64 one, you remember how how detailed it was to try to adjust the Nav 1 and Nav 2 and, and the comm radio. So you had to hit Control N1 for Nav 1 and then do Control NN to get the decimals. If you wanted Nav 2, you have to do Control N2 and then use the uh, you know less than, greater than sign to go up and down and control in in to do the decimal and the same thing with the com radio it's control c <laughs> and the transponder 
you can set the transporter it does absolutely nothing you can't do anything with it and that that annoyed me for the longest time I'm like why is it there I can't do anything with it um, it wasn't until like a, you know with the flight simulator or the Microsoft series uh, my first PC version was 5.1 um, but when I got to 98 <clears throat> and I was using ProFlight 98, that was my jam right there. Uh, then it started to have me change the transponder frequencies and everything. And I was like, oh, yes, I finally get to do this. Yeah, the keystrokes... <laughs> They are a challenge. They are a challenge. And the Commodore 64 does not have a numerical keypad. So when you're playing this on an emulator, I have to remember not to go to my keypad because it's not going to do anything. <laughs> Everything is in the center of the keyboard. So G is the... So if you think of your numerical keypad at the center of your keyboard, G is the center. Your, your elevator is T and B. So uh, T is down B is up the uh, F and H are your air lines. your elevator trim is the R and V and the flaps are actually Y and N so Y for you know retracting the flaps and N for extending the flaps the rudder controls is the M key and the C key uh, and your throttle is the comma and semicolon and as far as uh, like your map your map is the four key this right here five puts you back on the view but then if you go five uh, H then you can look out the side window five B looks uh, back you can look at an angle five Y and of course uh, you know with your map you can zoom in and zoom out but you would do that with the period and the comma key or the less than greater than sign but whatever you do do not use the minus or the plus key I think it's the plus key it will reset it and put you back at megs so whatever you do don't touch those keys <laughs> Oh, and uh, Control D, uh, set your uh, gyro compass, which we need to turn here, get ourselves I bet that road goes to Muskegon. I bet this goes right over there. I need to look up on a real map and see what river that is. Yeah, right? The whole thing uh, of that mayor and what he did. Unbelievable. It's one thing to close the airport. It's an entirely different thing when you rip up and put dig up X's onto the runway uh, where the planes are stranded and have to, at least they got off with the taxiway. But I don't know how in the world he got away with that. That's got to be. He should have been uh, fined or something. I mean, that was just wrong. And there was like no announcement about it. It was just in the middle of the night. He just did it. He had to burr up his butt or something. Who knows? I know there's been talk about bringing Megs back. Um, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Oh, 
uh, let's see, I'm looking at a real map. I want to see what river that is. All right, we'll look up Grand Rapids because that's what we're next to. No, not Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Although I did... Yeah, I did fly to Grand Rapids, Minnesota in the other simulators because they're at least able to go into the areas where this cannot. So they're all following the same flight plan to a certain point. There it is, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. All right, show me a river. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> the Grand River. <laughs> well, that wasn't hard. <laughs> so this is the Grand River that we're looking at right here. Stakes. I'm assuming that's Stakes. S-T-8-K-S. Stakes. How are you doing? Welcome to the killer community. Nice to have you. Nice to have you here on board. We're loading scenery at 1541 speed because that was a fantastic, huge, floppy disk player that made a lot of noise. <laughs> <clears throat> but what was worse, the disk drive or that cassette player? <laughs> oh my goodness, the cassette player. I had... Forbidden Forest on the Commodore 64 and I had it on cassette that thing took like 30 minutes to load and if it didn't load correctly you had to restart and do it all over again <laughs> <clears throat> oh my ASD okay. I need a new keyboard all my keys are wearing off here <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm trying to think they have Flight Simulator 2 for, for the cassette also um, I don't know if you knew that um, Yeah, we had a floppy disk by that time. We had to have a floppy disk by that time because the scenery disks were only on floppy. They weren't on cassette. I can't remember if I had anything else on cassette. Do you remember Solo Flight? <clears throat> the Solo Flight where you did the uh, the mail runs? Um, <clears throat> I am going to be doing some videos on Solo Flight. I actually played Solo Flight before I played this. Uh, technically, that's my first flight simulator, but... I don't know. I think Solo Flight's more of a game. <clears throat> and I suppose this could be a game too. No, don't let the cat in here. One of my cats is now in the room. I should be interrupted here in no time at all. <laughs> okay, so we're seeing some blue out here in the distance. And that is Lake Michigan that we're seeing. I know, that's fantastic scenery, isn't it? We are 13 miles away. We're 13 miles away from Muskegon. Not necessarily airport, but we are <clears throat> that far away. And downward sim. Downwind sim, not downward. Downward is what I do when I uh, stall. <laughs> downwind sim. Thank you for following and being part of the killer community. You're awesome. You're all awesome. <clears throat> I really appreciate it. And just as a reminder, be sure you head over to, to my YouTube channel because I have a lot of videos on Flight Simulator over there. 
So if you love Flight Simulator, you love the old ones, um, go check it out. I've got videos on all the old simulators uh, from Microsoft Flight Simulator 1 um, all the way to uh, FSX and P3D and X-Plane. And also some of the um, offshoot ones, I guess you could call them, like uh, ProPilot and uh, Terminal Realities uh, Fly. Um, the only ones I don't have, like I don't have the Sublogic Flight Simulator one for the Apple. Um, <clears throat> played it once, really hard to get into. Um, probably should focus on maybe getting it on the channel. <clears throat> and um, I have a variety of different types of flight simulator videos. So I have some that I narrate uh, with face cam. And then I have some that are uh, full flights. They're, they're full flights, so they could be like three, four hours long, and they're cinematics. So there's no face cam, no talking. Um, it's the full flight. They're, they make great ASMR videos. So if you want to sit back and relax, and that those are great videos to have uh, on the background. Um, I think for me, I think they're calming and relaxing when you're hearing, you know, the gentle uh, chatter over the comm radio. Uh, and also they're sightseeing. So as we're flying over uh, certain things, um, I'll have a title on the screen pointing out what it is. But you may also be interested in what I have called Flight Simulator 4 Adventures. If you want to see an old simulator that I pushed way beyond what people ever thought, you're going to want to see that one. Those, those are cinematics, and I have ATC. <laughs> I've actually got air traffic control speaking uh, to the pilot, and then I uh, program these adventures so that way the pilot is speaking back to air traffic control. <laughs> And then uh, I created some uh, custom scenery as well as dynamic uh, scenery with airplanes and stuff coming into the airport. So, yeah, those take a little bit of time, but the result is just amazing. Jet. Okay, good point. I don't have, uh, I didn't do one on Jet. However, I the jet is going to be a part of the flight simulator too. And when, when I get to that, it's going to be like when we fly from the United States over to Europe. Uh, because no way am I going to try to do that <laughs> in this plane. Uh, or like going from California to Hawaii or Hawaii to Japan because there's scenery just for all those. I'll use jet for those. Um, I may do some side videos using jet, but as far as the world tour is concerned, it doesn't quite make too much sense to use jet because it uses the same exact scenery discs as the Commodore 64. So it's going to look exactly the same, just faster. <laughs> um, ATP. I do have ATP. And I have not, okay, so not every flight simulator, almost every flight simulator. Uh, I do have ATP. I haven't done anything with that one yet. But there is, uh, uh, there is the Sublogic Flight. The Sublogic Flight Light is what it was originally called. Um, and then it was truncated down to Sublogic Flight. Um, I do have videos on that one. The TRS-80. Oh, man. Wasn't that Texas Instruments? The TRS-80? Okay, that airport's got to be somewhere close. Okay, this is where our IFR uh, flying is going to be coming in. Uh,
according to the map, the airport, maybe it's not over here. This is where it's going to get fun. Okay. Um, we're going to have to use some cross-referencing here. I know that once... I love how these things look like stopwatches. <laughs> when the 220 uh, uh, lines up... Actually, it should be 21. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay. Control V2. Ah, oh, there it is. It's moving. Okay, so. There is definitely nothing out this direction. So the airport has got to be over to the left. I tell you what, on these old flight simulators, I learned, this is where I learned all of my IFR <laughs> skills, was this. Because, well, with scenery, what, what did you have? You had white lines for roads and uh, blue lines for rivers. Patches of brown for, you know, cities. <laughs> I see the airport! I see it. It's right here. It's right there. Now the question is, can we line up with it? <laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay. Let's drop down some flaps. We're probably going way too fast here. Radio Shack. Nerd alert! Nerd alert! <laughs> I, re I remember back in the 80s, being called a, a, a nerd was kind of a derogatory statement. But now, uh, these days, it's kind of like uh, a, a symbol of respect. <laughs> it, has, it has a whole different meaning these days. <laughs> Flying on instruments. All right, let's use our GPS moving map, uh, which is just the map, <laughs> and see if we can maybe see where the airport's at. Well, don't see it there, and I zoomed out too much. You can see the big Lake Michigan there coming in. This is about the only way, if you're coming in at the airport at some type of angle, using that map is like almost the only way that you can try to get yourself somewhat lined up. Otherwise, you just got this blob of lines over here, which is kind of hard to hard to see. And you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator Two, it's got the jagged lines too, obviously, but they're not as thick. I've noticed they're a little. It's a little bit easier uh, um, to see. But I remember, and I still use this technique, when I look at the airport, I always try to find a line or something, not this line. Okay, so like there's this little dot that is right down here, which may be a, a runway at an angle. 
so I always kind of try to look for something that might be on the top and on the bottom that kind of give me an indication that they're matter of fact I think the runways right here I'm gonna turn myself And trying to center and actually land on a runway is, man, that is challenging. Because sometimes they'll get lined up and then I just kind of like breeze off or like you land on the runway and then you're off in the grass. <laughs> it's usually kind of hard. I think, I think there's a runway right here. Or one right there. Let's take a look at the overhead map again. Ah, that doesn't show us anything. Maybe I need to zoom in. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Don't see anything yet. <clears throat> I'm beginning to see it, though. There's one here. There's another one. Hold on. All right, let's drop another thing of flaps here. Let's slow down. That is hard to see. We're going to do this. going to be making a sharp 90 degree turn here because you know that's what they would do in real life right <laughs> <laughs> doing a go around on flight simulator 2 for the c64 no nah, we don't play that <laughs> homie don't play that game <laughs> But I did do a touch and go. I did a touch. I did two of them um, over on uh, YouTube. I did two touch and goes, and I've never done that before on on these old old simulators. And one of the touch and goes was at Megs, and so that was just kind of a neat thing to to do. It was kind of like a tip tip of my hat to Megs, because uh, I was coming back around. I started off at Megs and then I came back around and I wanted to tip my hat to Megs and I thought doing a touch and go would be a great way to do that and I gotta say that was that was kinda of fun trying to do it on a really old simulator like this you know and trying to get off the ground before I rolled off into the ocean or <laughs> not the ocean the lake <laughs> turning I bet you remember though when this when this simulator stalls it's game over <laughs> when it stalls it just goes <laughs> it's not forgiving at all at least with the newer simulators if you stall you still have somewhat control over it not this one oh my goodness Okay, folks, we're coming in. Let's 
One more thing of flaps. Let's make sure we don't don't stall. Don't sink. <laughs> don't sink. Okay. We're getting down. We're getting down. Watch our airspeed. Careful now. Careful, careful, careful. No, 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 Okay, well, that didn't go so well. <laughs> I was lined up. I was just about to land. Oh. I, I've said this once and I've said it several times. When it stalls, you're done. When it stalls, when that thing goes, eh, it just nose dives into the ground. I mean... Uh, with the with the newer simulators, it doesn't do that. It does not nosedive like that. So it can be very very challenging to try to land these. Um, but I don't crash all the time. You guys know that. If you've been following this series, you know that I don't always crash. Heck, the last episode I didn't crash. Um, now, if I wanted to. I could go back and do a little fancy editing to show that I that, that I landed, but you know I want to keep these uh, videos honest for you guys. I mean, if I crash, I crash. Eh, what the heck? You know, the videos aren't going to be perfect, uh, and in some ways they might be somewhat entertaining because they're not perfect. But uh, anyways, um, with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, if you did. Do a thumbs up. Do a like. I'd appreciate that. Uh, the more likes and thumbs up there is, uh, the more uh, uh, vis visual uh, people will be able to see the, um, well, you know, the video on their feed and stuff like that. And will attract more people to come and see it and, and realize that these flights are out there uh, that they can watch. So it helps with that whole algorithm thing. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, then subscribe. Why not? Uh, you got nothing to lose there. I got videos coming out all the time on the channel. Every day is a is a theme on Killer TV, uh, and that theme also carries over to Twitch, uh, with the exception of Tuesday. Tuesday is Tuesday Theatrics. Um, I don't do that over on uh, Twitch, so I take that day off and I start working on stuff like game reviews or the cinematic. Uh, uh, videos and stuff like that but uh, but yeah other than that all the days match up with uh, what I'm doing on Twitch and these uh, videos that you're seeing were actually I was as I was recording it I was streaming it over on Twitch and so the people I was talking to were real people uh, that were joining me on the live stream uh, so Shout out to Sim Caesar and Downward or Downwind Sim. I keep wanting to say Downward. And was there? There's another one. Oh no, he was on the previous flight. Uh, Stu Capped. Stu Capped. He was on the last flight. But there were Stakes. Okay, yeah, Stakes had followed me. He didn't say anything. Um, but uh, he was on the stream. So uh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, um, if you haven't joined me on tw Twitch, go ahead and follow me there, and then you might be able to catch me while I'm going live, and then you will be part of the show, and that's a cool thing. I mean, how cool is that? You got channels that put out videos, but how many of them do you actually get to be a part of? So you get to do that here with Killer Television, just because it's killer awesome. And so are you. So appreciate 
appreciate you guys watching. Um, means a lot to me. And I will see you on another video. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.